Hello again, everybody, and welcome back to So Biased. My name is Melissa. Myself, Ayana from the Vintage Guidebook, and Lindsay from Thistle and Stitches are collaborating on a World War II challenge where we're challenging people to make a garment using all of the restrictions of rationing from World War II. I will put links to the playlist up above, and the entries are already coming in, and they are so lovely. I highly recommend them. It wouldn't do for me to issue a challenge and not participate. So for this challenge, not only am I going to make a World War II appropriate garment, I am going to make it using a government issued pattern. Hi, do I taste funny? It's raining, we can't walk now. Yes. Yes, you need, okay. Now during World War II, many nations governments were trying to help people conserve resources, everything from fuel to clothing to food, meat, sugar, all sorts of staples were really hard to obtain. And so the government said, here's all sorts of ways that you can conserve. And one of the things they would do is they would create sewing patterns that they would make available to people through all sorts of different ways. Sometimes it would be the War Department coming out with these patterns, but in this particular particular instance, this one was issued by the U.S. Department of Agriculture as a way of getting people to grow more food as well as be more self-sufficient. And so they made this pattern for an apron, which has drawstrings on it that turn into a basket. So you can carry seeds or bulbs, or if you're using it for harvest, you can you know, put apples or potatoes or whatever you're harvesting into the basket and carry it in. Now, I do have a small vegetable garden at my house and I completely understand the need to have lots of things to carry because if you are doing something like a potato harvest, I have often had to go find a big cooking pot and take it out to the garden with me and then just toss a ton of potatoes into it and then try to haul it back in. So having this in an apron, makes a ton of sense. I was able to find the very original publication that this was put in. I'm going to put a link to the pattern in the description below. I'm starting to compile lists of a lot of my extant references and I'm making that available to my coffee subscribers. So if you want to donate to my coffee, please click the link here or in the description below and I will have all sorts of resources available to you if you want to try to do this yourself. As well, I am going to be doing a live sew along of this pattern. If you've never drafted a pattern before or never used a vintage pattern, this is a perfect opportunity because I will walk you through the step of drafting it right onto the fabric. You will probably be able to make this in less than an hour and I will make a supply list for everything that you need, which is basically one yard of fabric, some drawstring, and then basic sewing supplies. And you can have your own functional vintage US Department of Agriculture approved basket apron. It does not take a huge amount of skill or time or effort to make. So if you're looking for a project to make for your first drafting experience or you don't feel comfortable making a garment or something fitted, this is such a great choice to start with. But until then, let's get sewing. All right, so I started laying out this pattern and you can hopefully see my chalk drawings here. I just folded it in half because it's cut on the fold. I folded it along the center of the pattern so it should hopefully be perfectly centered. Drew out the waist and then curved it up curved it around to the widest point. Unfortunately, my fabric isn't quite wide enough to do it as wide as they want, but that's totally fine. It's still gonna be like 28 inches across, which is more than enough. This is the kind of fattest area and then curving it around to the bottom. I'm also marking the dots where the drawstring holes go. And then next up, I'm gonna be drawing the belt. If you look at the pattern, it says to draw like this particular grid and then trace it on to paper. I'm not doing that because I'm super lazy. Uh, so next up, I'm going to draw the belt, which is also on the fold. All right, so the belt is drawn on, but my fabric is way narrower than the fabric they must have had because I only have, like I said, the 14 inches across and they wanted 22 inches across. So instead of one, I'm doing two. I have just enough to do two belt pieces. and I'm just going to sew them together at the middle because I do not have a 28 inch waist.
All right, so we have our apron cut out on the fold, obviously, um, and I have marked the dots where the eyelets go. So the first step it says is to sew the eyelets, which is a thing I have never done. So I am going to get an awl and a whole bunch of thread and start sewing some eyelets. Basically to do an eyelet, you just punch a hole in the fabric with an awl, try not to like cut it because then you'll have loose threads and then you just do stitches around the edge. If you've never sewn an eyelet before, it's pretty straightforward. It's just a little time consuming. If you have a sewing machine that will do this for you, by all means using the sew use the sewing machine. I would too, but my sewing machine won't do this. You mark wherever you want your eyelet to be. I only have it marked on one side, so I'm going to cheat and just punch through. And you use an awl to gently push through. And what this does is it moves the fibers out of the way without cutting them. And make sure it's wide enough that your shoelaces can actually get through. So we have a decent sized hole that is big enough for all of the shoelaces to get through to use as a drawstring. What you want to do is you want to sew a fairly even set of stitches just around the circle here. So if this is the outside or the right side rather, I'm going to come in about a quarter inch from the hole and then pull the thread through and then put the needle through the hole and then come out as close to that first stitch as possible and then do it again. And you don't want to pull these really tight and you just go around the hole making tiny tiny stitches right next to each other and you can kind of see getting a little bit of an eyelet started. This is going to take forever and I have four of them. So I am just going to cut straight to the finish of when these are all done. Okay, we have four eyelets done. Don't look too close. They're not the prettiest, but they are functional. So all those are finished. And next up is going to be the waist belt. Now, like I said, I had to make it a two piece. So I'm just going to sew it down the center and then turn it in half and sew it down the sides um, and turn it inside out because that's the type of waist belt this is. Okay, the next step is the hem. Now, we're not just hemming, we're creating a channel for the drawstrings. So we need to fold under the channel and then fold it over so that we enclose the eyelet inside the middle so we have a channel there for it to run through. So it needs to be folded close to, but not right on the eyelet and then slightly over so that we actually have enough room to sew here without interfering with the eyelet. So I'm going to fold all of that, pin all that down, and that goes all the way around the sides and bottom, but not the top because we're attaching the belt to the top. All right, so next step is attaching the waist belt. I just lined up the center with the center of the apron and pinned it together and I'm going to sew it on and then I'm gonna do a machine surging stitch just so it doesn't fray cause it's cotton and it's already fraying. All right, so the final step in the process is the drawstrings. And I ended up getting this cotton drawstring instead of the polyester. It calls for cotton shoelaces, which I couldn't find, but I did find this. It's quite thick, but Hopefully it will work as long as I can get it through the eyelets that I made. And if you've never done feeding a drawstring through before, the best thing to do is to tape off the edges or if they're polyester or synthetic, you can burn them so they'll melt and then put a safety pin through them. And that way you can pull on the safety pin through the channel to get it through the other side. And the drawstrings work beautifully. I only ended up being able to get one through because is a very close fit with the eyelets. So I have one and then I tied a knot at the end and then fed it through to the bottom. When I pull the drawstring tight, it just stays shut. It doesn't wanna unfeed itself, which is really nice. So I can pull it completely and it will just stay pulled, especially at the middle there. It's quite firm unless I act, <clears throat> unless I really pull on it to open it up again. What you're supposed to do is pull it shut and then toss the strings onto the inside of the apron for when you're carrying things. And that way you don't have the strings hanging around. 
and that is it. Um, if you're gonna do two strings, what you would do is you would thread one through the bottom and leave like a three inch tail on it and then get it really close to the top, like an inch or so shy, and then you would sew it down with like a bar tack or something. And then vice versa, you would thread one through the top, leaving a two or three inch tail and then bar tack it to just short of the bottom and that way you could pull on both strings at the same time. So that's it. The apron is done. Ta -da! So that is the basket apron. I have already been putting it to use around the house. I'm already starting to get some seeds started and get my garden started. So this is a really handy thing to have around the house, especially when I'm walking with my cane. I don't always have an extra pair of hands. I usually only have the one, so I can just hold the apron and fill it with stuff that I can carry out with me, including just a ton of gardening tools and fertilizer and stuff. I will be adding this video to the World War II Boo. And if you're interested in making this yourself, I hope you will join me. If you want to make it alongside me, it shouldn't take much more than an hour to create from start to finish. If you don't want to make it and you just want to hang out and ask questions, that is fine. Bring a cup of tea. I have a few more projects coming up, including some knitting projects. I have been low on spoons lately, so having to rest a lot, and it is really easy to do a whole lot of knitting when you're resting. And some might have something to do with the CWAC uniform project I am working on. I hope you'll join me for the live stream, but until then, I hope you stay happy and healthy, stay safe, take care of each other, and we'll see you all soon. Bye. I will be putting out, mm,